It's September 7, 2021. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I want to talk about lighthouses near Mount Desert Island. And this video is just going to uh, show you some pictures of lighthouses. These are all pictures that I took, uh, with one exception. They're pictures I took from the water, and I'll point out the exception when we get to it. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is just fill you in a little on the history of the lighthouses, the accessibility of the lighthouses, and, uh, you know, just show you the pictures. So, hope you uh, enjoy the video. Ah, just a reminder, to see more videos like this, uh, why don't you uh, subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. And if you like the video, click the thumbs up button. Okay, let's get going. The first lighthouse I want to talk about is Bass Harbor Head Light. And the reason I'll give it first is that it is the only lighthouse that is actually on Mount Desert Island. And as you can see in the map here, it's at the southern tip of the island. The lighthouse is also in Acadia National Park, although prior to Jan July 8th, last year in 2020 the lighthouse itself belonged to the Coast Guard but it was transferred to the park uh, last July. Now although you can drive to this lighthouse uh, during the high season it's a little difficult to do because it is very very popular and one of the most popular places for visitors to Acadia National Park to come to and it only has a parking lot that can accommodate 27 cars. So it's not unusual, particularly if you try to come around sunset, to find that you uh, may have to wait to get into the lighthouse. And sometimes there's a line almost half a mile long of cars from the park boundary to the parking lot uh, with, of people waiting to get into the parking lot to park. So, yes, you can drive to this lighthouse, but uh, if you want to come at a popular time of day, around sunset, uh, be prepared to wait a while before you can park your vehicle and then get out and walk down to the lighthouse. Well, this is the view of the lighthouse from the water. Uh, I took this last uh, summer as I went by in my sailboat. And when, if you drive to the lighthouse, you can come down to right next to the lighthouse on the left-hand side of it. And if you, or you can walk through the woods a little bit and come down onto the rocks to the right of the lighthouse. That's where the sort of iconic pictures of the lighthouse are generally taken. Anyway, this lighthouse was built in 1858. And it had a keeper who lived in the house to the left of the light tower there uh, until 1957. And the lighthouse was automated in 1974. And so between 18, 1957 and 1974, somebody came over from the Coast Guard station uh, daily to make sure everything was working properly and to turn on or off the fog signal. And as I said before, this lighthouse was in Coast Guard possession until July 8, 2020, when it was transferred to Acadia National Park. So this is probably the most photographed lighthouse uh, in the area, and maybe one of the most photographed lighthouses uh, in the United States, because according to the National Park website, it gets over 180,000 visitors a year, and almost all of them take a picture of it. And this year, uh, I think the visitation has been far more than 180,000. The next lighthouse I want to show you is the Bear Island Lighthouse. Now, this lighthouse is located on Bear Island, which is just offshore of the entrance to Northeast Harbor uh, between Mount Desert Island to the north and Sutton Island to the south, as shown here on the map. This is a picture of Bear Island Light taken from the south. 
uh, with a little bit of Mount Desert Island behind. And just wanted to say a few things about the light. It was built in 1839, uh, but the current light tower was built in 1889. And the lighthouse was discontinued in 1981, and that continued through 1989. In 1981, the National Park, Acadia National Park, acquired Bear Island and the lighthouse. And the lighthouse basically sat there for eight years. Uh, and then in 1989, the National Park made an arrangement uh, to lease the lighthouse and the island to a private party who would maintain it. And it has been that way ever since. So although this lighthouse belongs to Acadia National Park and is actually in the park, it is not open to the public. You cannot go to Barrett Island unless you get an invitation from the private party that leases the lighthouse on the island from the National Park Service. There are two other lighthouses that are close to Mount Desert Island. The first one that I'll mention here is Egg Rock Light, which is on Egg Rock, which is basically halfway between Mount Desert Island and the Skudik Peninsula to the east. Now you can see this lighthouse from land, either from uh, on the Park Loop Road, there are a couple turnouts where you can see it. You can see it from the top of Cadillac Mountain, and you can also see it from the road on the west side of the Skudik Peninsula. Now, I don't have a picture of this lighthouse because I have not been over there by boat for more than 20 years. I just haven't gone there, so I do not have a current picture of it. But it was built in 1875 to provide guidance for ships entering Frenchman Bay, which is the bay to the north of Egg Rock Light. And it had a keeper until it was automated in 1976. And the second close-in lighthouse is Baker Island Light, shown here on the map. Uh, it is a little bit south and east of the main part of Mount Desert Island, and just southeast of Little Cranberry Island. And I don't have a picture of Baker Island Light either, uh, and uh, there's a good reason for that. The trees on Baker Island have grown up so that from most directions, you cannot see the lighthouse. Uh, from the south, you can just see the top of the lighthouse, but in pictures I've taken, it really doesn't show up. Baker Island Light uh, was built in 1828, and it had a keeper until 1955. It was discontinued from 1955 to 1957 when the light was automated. Now you can visit Baker Island Light because there are tour, it is in Acadia National Park, and there are tour boats that go out there from Northeast Harbor that will put you ashore and you can walk up to the lighthouse. The light tower, however, is not open to the public, but you can get right up next to it and have a good look at it. And that really is the only way that you can see Baker Island Light. The next closest lighthouse to Mount Desert Island is the Winter Harbor Lighthouse. It's located on Mark Island at the entrance to Winter Harbor over on the Skudik Peninsula. And this is the only lighthouse I have pictures of where the pictures were taken from land. This is one lighthouse that I don't have a picture from the water. These pictures were taken from the Skudik Peninsula part of Acadia National Park on the Park Loop Road, where you can see the lighthouse. The lighthouse is located on Mark Island, which is a small rocky island, and the trees that you see behind the lighthouse are on the island immediately west of Mark Island. Now this lighthouse was originally uh, put into service on January 1st, 1857, 
and it has a relatively short history in that it was discontinued in favor of a lighted buoy in 1933, and that was when the last keeper lived at the lighthouse. The lighthouse was sold into private ownership in 1934 and has been that way since. It is accessible by boat, but because the entire island is privately owned, it is not accessible to the general public. The next lighthouse is the Blue Hill Bay Lighthouse. It's located about four miles west of the western side of Mount Desert Island, across Blue Hill Bay on a small island. The Blue Hill Bay Lighthouse is only accessible by boat. It's on a small rocky island on the western side of Blue Hill Bay, and the island is surrounded by ledges, so it's quite tricky to approach it. And this picture is taken from the west looking at uh, the lighthouse. The lighthouse uh, was originally built in 1856 and had a keeper until it was deactivated in 1934. Uh, at that time, the light itself was replaced by a light on an iron tower a little bit further over on the island. You cannot see it in this picture. And the lighthouse went into private hands in 1976 and as such uh, is not open to the public, but it's quite a scenic a little lighthouse. It is, however, a bit out of the way. It is not on any current uh, primary travel routes, and uh, it makes you wonder, really, why they put it where they did. I think it probably reflected uh, sail ship routes up into the Agamogan Reach more than anything else. And since uh, sailing ships are no longer that common on the main coast, uh, it seems like it's a poorly placed lighthouse now. The next lighthouse we're gonna look at is Great Duck Island Light. It's located on the southern end of Great Duck Island and is about six miles southeast of the southern tip of Mount Desert Island. The light is a relatively new light. It was only established in 1890 and operated uh, with a keeper until 1943. Uh, and after that, uh, Coast Guard uh, personnel from Coast Guard Station Southwest Harbor would go out and uh, periodically maintain the light. It was automated in 1986. Now the island used to have a year-round population on it, but that hasn't been the case for quite a long time. Most of the island uh, was sold to the Nature Conservancy in 1984, and in 1998, the College of the Atlantic in Bar Harbor bought the area right around the lighthouse and maintains that area and the buildings, including the keeper's house. Uh, they close that area to visitors from late spring to early fall every year and the bulk of the island owned by the Nature Conservancy is a bird sanctuary. There is a private home on the northeast tip of the island that is rented out on a weekly basis in the summer and you can be shuttled out there for, on a boat from Southwest Harbor. The island itself is quite difficult to get ashore on. There are only a couple spots where you can uh, get ashore. And uh, it's totally open to the ocean, so it uh, can really be battered by storms. This is a view of Great Duck Island Light uh, from the west, looking east. You can see the lighthouse and the keeper's house and a couple of other structures there. And it's, this is about as close as you can approach the lighthouse normally. This is the view of Great Duck Island Light from the south. Now, an interesting fact about this lighthouse, it is, has what's called a sector light. And you can only see the light on the lighthouse from the uh, southwest to the southeast of the light and it's not visible 
to the north at all. And even though you can see the southern tip of Great Duck Island from Mount Desert Island, you cannot see the actual light itself when the lighthouse is operating at night. And the only way to see this lighthouse is uh, to take a private boat out or some of the uh, seabird and whale watcher trips uh, go past this lighthouse during the summer. The next lighthouse is on Swans Island, about seven and a half miles southwest of the southern tip of Mount Desert Island, and it's located pretty nearly at the southernmost point of Swans Island at the entrance to Burnt Coat Harbor. And this is the Swans Island or Hockamock Head Light. It was established in 1872 and operated with a keeper until 1975 when the light was automated. After automation, the light uh, deteriorated rather substantially until in 1993, the town of Swans Island bought the light and uh, renovated it. And it is now open to the public in summer. You can tour the keeper's house and go up in the tower. Here is the view of the light as you approach the entrance to Burnt Coat Harbor on Swans Island. The harbor entrance is just to the right of the lighthouse. And you can uh, get to this light by car if you take the ferry from Bass Harbor on Mount Desert Island over to Swans Island. Then you can drive right up to the light. Alternatively, you can go over there by private boat and uh, anchor or pick up a mooring in Burnt Coat Harbor and go ashore and it's a short walk only about half a mile up to the lighthouse and uh, it's quite a scenic spot and you can really see a lot looking south from there this lighthouse was built primarily as an aid for entry to Burnt Coat Harbor which is the principal uh, harbor on Swans Island the next to the last lighthouse today is Petite Manan Light. It's located on Petite Manan Island, 13 and a half miles east at the easternmost point of Mount Desert Island. The lighthouse is generally not visible unless you're out on a boat, and you can see it on really clear days from just east of the Cranberry Islands with binoculars. It can also be seen uh, from the Skudik Peninsula on a clear day, if you're on the eastern side of the Skudik Peninsula. Now, Petit Manan Island is in a National Wildlife Refuge, which is closed to the public from early spring through the end of August for seabird nesting season. Uh, but outside of that period, it is possible to visit the islands, although the lighthouse itself is closed. This picture looking north at Petit Manan Island shows the lighthouse reasonably well. It's a little tricky to get really close to it because there are a lot of shoals around it. The lighthouse was authorized in 1817 and the first tower was built then. Now that tower was in very poor repair uh, and was replaced by the current tower in 1855. It is a granite tower and is the second tallest lighthouse tower in Maine at 119 feet. The lighthouse had keepers from the lighthouse service up until about 1953, and then it was maintained by Coast Guard personnel who lived in the keeper's house until 1972 when it was automated. The last lighthouse today is Moose Peak Light on Mistake Island, 29 miles east of Mount Desert Island. Moose Peak Light was established in 1826, and the current tower was built in 1851. It's a brick tower. The light was automated in 1872. There were keepers until the late 30s from the lighthouse service and after that from 
approximately 1940 to automation in 1972, the light was manned by U.S. Coast Guard personnel. Now, the island ownership is uh, private right around the lighthouse and for the boathouse uh, that is associated with the lighthouse. And uh, the northern part of the island is owned by the Nature Conservancy. You can only really see this light by private boat passing offshore. It's possible to go just past Mistake Island and go through the narrow uh, channel and anchor in behind Mistake Island and go ashore on the island. I don't know about access to the lighthouse area at present because of the private ownership. But uh, when I was there about uh, 10 years ago, you could uh, walk over and look at the lighthouse. And it was in quite poor condition then. I understand it is currently being renovated. But you cannot uh, go into the lighthouse. Okay, I hope you enjoyed uh, my little uh, slideshow of lighthouses uh, near Mount Desert Island, although the furthest one was almost 30 miles away, but it's still relatively near. And uh, basically, if you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. And as I said at the beginning, uh, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell and the like button. Thanks for watching.